fuck this. You know, I always try to make my reviews interesting to watch and enjoyable, but this time there are really only a few interesting mods around and the rest is a big, steamy pile of weapons and armors. What the fuck am I supposed to do with this? Ah, shit, whatever. Let's get this over with. So it appears the current clickbait trend YouTubers like Soyboy MXR, for example, have been using lately is to pretend their modded games look like they have been made in the future. But I say fuck this lame shit, instead we are going back to the past. Classic computers by Strider. Hell yeah, motherfuckers! Welcome back to the 90s. Now this is the technology that really left a mark. They couldn't do much, but at least there was no danger of killing the screen by punching it. Those monitors were like tanks. Yeah, times were simpler back then, and way more chiller, that's for sure. No internet, no YouTube, no fucking mods, no fucking reviews, no fucking sleepless nights, and no fucking what in B do you use for the bazillionth fucking time! And since I mentioned handheld devices, let's bring our Pip-Boy to the past as well. Hackboy by John Connor. Hackboy. Yeah, what the heck, boy? Who the hell designed this abomination? A five-year-old? Was my first thought, but I have to admit, it looks way better in the actual game. The toxic atomic green glow on those hoses looks red. Uh, get it? I thought those were wires at first, but then I noticed that plasma cartridge. This shit just totally goes with the theme and fits to my heart colors too. Wait a sec, what was that? Is there something written on the side? PSP? 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 Are you telling me this is partially a fucking PSP? Now I like it even more. And now we are going to build something retro. Well, not really. Reginald's Prefab Shack Feast by Reginald Underwood. <laughs> Underwood. I mean, this stuff is pretty much on the same level as the vanilla architectural glory. And when fucking Preston sends us to help another retard settlement, because apparently we are the only ones with a pair of functional hands and have to rebuild the whole commonwealth by ourselves, I shall just spam those shacks all over the place. Take that. Hope you like your new settlement. This mod has more than enough prefabs to stuff into your settlements. Wooden shacks, metal shacks, dog shacks, interior plot shacks, vendor shacks. Holy shit, this is exactly the right stuff if you don't want to waste your time building yourself. And don't want to use this sim settlements crap either, which has like a million features by now and working your way through them requires even more fucking time. And probably a couple of engineering degrees as well. Yeah, seriously, fuck that. Okay, I am not sure what's going on, but apparently females are taking over Fallout 4 now. Somebody decided that the cinematic intro is centered around Nate too much and Nora should have her own one. Yeah, sure, why not? Let's watch it, I guess. I practiced law. I made sure everyone got a fair trial, but they didn't get rolled over by the system. I did what had to be done. It kind of occupied most of my time. There were problems, but it was home, you know? I was used to it. Blue skies, green grass, clean streets, a nice home with a bunch of silly appliances, friendly neighbors. Not like now. Not at all. It's the same old thing. People fighting each other instead of working together. Everything going to hell, but no one doing anything about it. changes. 
cool. But how about we check out something a bit more gameplay related? Working Visible Weapons by Hunk92 A new revolutionary visible weapons mod appears to be way better than all the previous ones. This one works for the player and followers, even with modded weapons and completely without downloading any extra models. Sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? Well, that's probably because it is. While this mod kinda does what it promises, it is also a glitchy, buggy, highly compressed pill of fecal waste, which you might find a bit hard to swallow. First of all, it doesn't work with the vanilla favorite system and will CTD if you try. Instead, you have to use the followed hotkeys mod. Then it uses its own skeleton, so you will probably need to wait for a compatibility patch for this extended skeleton, which everybody probably uses by now. But all that are just minor inconveniences. We have yet to take a look at the gigantic shit pile of visual bugs. There can be glitches like guns showing up in wrong places, duplicating, disappearing, reappearing, blinking, jittering, jiggling, flying all over the fucking screen and going completely batshit insane. Visible weapons also disappear when you fast travel or go through doors, says the description. Actually, I cannot confirm that. As I went through the door, the weapons reappeared all by itself. Maybe it has been patched already. But my biggest problem is the visual mess anyway. It just breaks immersion. It will absolutely shit on your immersion. It's like the weapon has a mind of its own, and its only purpose is to shit all over you as soon as you start moving. And no matter how fast you run, you will not be able to escape this crap feast. But this is already it, folks. We are already done with the interesting stuff. Here comes another huge shit pile, this time of weapons and armors. Blade Runner Shotgun by John Connor. Oh yeah, that movie. If you manage not to fall asleep, it is kinda good. And sure, why not? It definitely fits into this game. It comes with a couple of different firing modes. No customization except for the different receivers, but they also change the weapon visually. The next one is Modular Infantry Energy Rifle by Arthurian. Another badass massive energy weapon. This one kinda tries to adapt to the vanilla energy weapon shape. For it there are also several firing types. Let's check them out. Holy shit, what the hell was that? It's like the BFG! The next one is Viper Armory Incorporated Crate 6712 Pump Action Shotgun by Scale. It's kinda just another pump action shotgun, but the design is really sharp, and the customization is top notch too. They certainly got the combat part right. The next one is Steampunk Weaponry, also by John Connor. There are two weapons in this one, the Steampunk Venturi Rifle and the Vortex Steampunk Shotgun. 
both models look great. However, only the shotgun can be customized. The next one is Hellboy Weapons by John Connor again. Seriously, what's with that guy? Did he sit down on an adrenaline syringe by mistake or something? Anyway, two weapons here as well. The Big Daddy and the Good Samaritan. And again with a couple of different ammo types. The next one is El Mariachi. See, John Connor again. And we're back to making weapons out of scrap again, like the pipe rifles. This weapon looks really weird, especially its customization and the firing types. And we also get a really cool melee weapon. Zombie Slayer, by guess who? I mean, I'm not really complaining, those weapons are really badass. But yes, indirectly this modder is making my life harder, because there is just so much to review. So yes, I am angry. And I am even more angry that there is no dual wield mod to use with those badass swords. But slaying there shall be. Let's slay those goblins. Uh, fuck, I mean zombies. I mean ghouls! Okay, now let's see what the Department of Armors is doing. First of all, El Cazador Armor by John Connor, of course. I don't know how this is even possible. But Cazadors, seriously, those fuckers gave us all a warm welcome the first time we met them. Don't even try to deny it. And now we're making armors out of them. Nah, unfortunately not. This is not Monster Hunter. The armor is just called that way. The next one is Aristocrat Attire by Jignow2. Was it this? Like from Assassin's Creed or something? Yeah, looks like it might be. The next one is TDA Casual Clothes by The Dudes Abides. Bah, that's just another one of those super casual generic outfit packs. 
which look exactly the same. The next one is Mad Moxie outfit by John Connor. God damn it! I swear, if this happens one more time, I'm gonna send Skeletal Robots to the past to kill him as a child. Yes, I had to make this joke. And the outfit? It sucks, because it's by John Connor. Fortunately, next we have one of the big battleship tier armor mods. Cross Chosen of Atom by Nero. This is really another one of those super detailed, highly customizable armors. Each part can be customized separately, there are tweaks available like removing sleeves of the jacket for example, lots of different skins, and a new feature here called Master Skin allows you to change the skin of every part as you choose the skin of the main outfit, but it only works if there is only one set of armor in your inventory. But with mods like this one, there is really nothing to complain about. The next one is Zero Suit Samus by Oh for fuck's sake! Okay, be right back. Need to prepare that time machine. And the last armor mod is Siphon Armor by Death Optimus. This is also an armor mod of very high complicatedness, um, of very high complexity. But wait a minute, is this the fucking Star Lord outfit? I mean, there is a lot of similarity, but it's probably just a coincidence, right? But then it gets even better, because of the customization lets you get some badass robotic jacks from Mortal Kombat arms. Only you have to make sure to equip the proper outfit parts with the missing limbs, or it might get a bit clippy. The skin variety for this mod is really insane, because you can even customize parts like the boots for example separately. The skins are also way more colorful than on the Chosen of Atom outfit. What, are you still here? I told you that was the last mod. So chop chop, hit the like button, subscribe if you still haven't, and get the fuck out of here. Because this is really it for this episode. Hopefully next time we will get some new quests or at least something interesting. So thank you all for watching and see you around.